Good day everyone. It's been a minute since I've done a video. We had spring break here at campus. So I figured I'd do a follow-up one from the assignment that was posted before spring break that students have to do and actually do tomorrow. But I wanted to do a follow-up quick video that's very similar to the assignment but not giving all the answers away. Assignment wise it's a lot of select by location and I have the hospitals pulled up, but I do not have the Ag Assault and Motor Vehicle Theft. This is available on Chattanooga's Open Data Portal. With that, the, the students are then making a final map showing in terms of counts how many Ag Assaults are within a quarter mile and half mile of hospitals and schools. Some text box added to a final map to kind of show some of the details. With that, I'm just going to quickly go over how to do select by location, primarily distance functions. I'll do one quick one with the hospitals, so this one will be related to the actual assignment. But let's get started. In front of you, I already have a Chattanooga project that I have ongoing with the police department focused on gun crime. With that, what you see in front of you are shootings that were geocoded uh, for Chattanooga going back to about 2013 or 2015 through 2021 and a couple in 2022 given when this was geocoded. I did add hospitals here to it. The hospitals data set came from HIFEL, the Department of Homeland Security's online data portal. Pretty handy to go through and look at. If you haven't viewed it before, it's a pretty cool one that has a lot of data. A lot was openly available during COVID. Some's become more restricted, but it is a good place to start if you're looking for place or featured data in the US. They have a lot of data, especially for criminal justice. Obviously, I have hospitals pulled up here, but they also have prisons, courts, law enforcement agencies, and it's shapefile based data, so all spatial in nature, which is super helpful. And the cool part is they also have ambient population data, which I'll get into in later videos outside of the course material, but I'm going to be using that with some Chattanooga projects. With that, I'm going to go over a couple minor things that we've hit on in other videos, but just as refreshers. Right now, we have hospitals put up as a point that's kind of a greenish yellow tint. You can see over here that it's pulled up as a symbol itself. We can change this. Remember, there is the option to search. So if I click on that and just put hospital, it's going to pull up a couple more options for us. I'm good with identifying it that way. I'm not going to go in and change all the colors. So if I were to take off the shootings layer, you can see where the hospitals are located. With that, I have not selected ones that are only in Chattanooga. You can see some outside of the boundary of. And if I were to actually zoom to layer, it's going to zoom out and span across the entire US and show you hospitals across the United States. Again, give this a second. I still need to upgrade my computer a little bit. I've had this one now five, six years. And Arc Pro is having some troubles with it uh, as of lately, but give it a second, it will boot up for us. All right, it's generating that for us. And you can see we have hospitals scattered around in the US, the territories associated with it. So if we want to zoom in and go back to Chattanooga, you can see I have a bunch of layers over here. At the bottom, I still do have my city boundaries. So if I just right click on this one and zoom back in, it'll take me to Chattanooga. Now, one of the questions on the homework assignment, one of the first ones is how many hospitals are within Chattanooga? So this one's not asking a distance function, but asking you to select only the hospitals within Chattanooga. Since we have a city boundary file, it gives us the city limit. We can use that to then select how many hospitals are within the Chattanooga city boundaries. So if we come up to the top, and select by location, we're going to do a within part to it. So we want to select hospitals that are within our city boundary. I'm just going to scroll to the top over here in my content panel so I can open the attribute table to the hospitals here in a second. So what I want to do is I'm going to input my hospitals and relationship wise, this is where it's key to identify what you want to do. So I want to say hospitals that are within, we're not doing distance, we'll come back to that here in a second, but within and our selecting features that city boundary file. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and it's down here, the city boundary. And when I hit apply, you're going to see the ones that are within Chattanooga actually turn blue. Sorry for the hesitation there. Sometimes I change the color when it comes to the selection part. And you can see now they're highlighted blue. The cool part is when I ask for the number, yes, you could 
simply just count them. But if you go into the attribute table of the hospitals layer, so the point layer that contains all the hospitals that we downloaded from Highfield, it's going to actually pull up the selected ones for us and tell us the actual count or number of hospitals that are within Chattanooga. You can see that's starting to generate now. So we have 99 out of just over 68,000 hospitals are within Chattanooga. If you ever want to see which ones are specifically, and since we already hit apply, we can hit OK and we're good to go there. We can select down here to show only our selected records and we can see the names of them, the type of facility, long-term care, general acute, psychiatric. So you can see all the different types of hospitals within it. And it'll give you an idea of what that looks like for the city. And you can do this for different cities, counties, states, and look at that. It's a pretty cool data set to work with and move from that's openly available. With that, the next two questions are kind of questions related to the assignment or a distance function to it. So the first part would then be, since we did select features, I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear on this one. It's asking within a hospital and park. I'm going to go ahead and add some data back to it. So if I come in to add data and I have Chattanooga pulled up, so I had the hospitals. I do have Chattanooga data, so I'm going to throw in just public schools instead of parks for this example. And I want to look at how many shootings are within a certain distance of school. So again, I'm going to change this symbol and just type in school. And there we go, we have the option there. So now we know where the school is. I can turn on the layer of shooting so you can see kind of where those are co-located if you wanna look at that relationship. In terms of shootings, if we open this attribute table, we can just see what this looks like. We have just over 1,000 that were geocoded and matched. With that, if we go now and do a select by location, say we wanna know uh, how many shootings are within a quarter mile of the schools, we can easily look at that. So we're going to do shootings near match that are within a distance. So within a distance of our selecting features, which is our public schools at the top. And for this, the key part is to change this. You can do feet if you want to. It's 5,280 feet in a mile. GIS gives you the option to actually just click miles. And then you can do 0.25, quarter of a mile, and hit apply. And give that a second to run. You can see 98 out of 1,043 are within a quarter mile. So you're looking at just under 10% there. If you're wondering how I get that number, I just eyeballed it from 100 being close to 1,000, but it's probably 9 point something percent. So if we did 98 divided by 1043, 9.39, 9.4% of all shootings occur within a quarter mile of a public school. Now, what if you wanted to change this? So since and we want to look at a half mile, since we're actually going up in distance, we don't have to clear what we're searching for here or clear the selection. We're just adding to it. So we go within a half mile. We see that jumps up to 335. So again, we can see what percentage that is pretty quickly and see that it jumps to about 32% of all shootings occur within a half mile of a public school in Chattanooga. Again, these are just how to change the distances for that to see what that looks like. If you're going from a larger distance or longer distance to a shorter, make sure you always hit clear so you're starting fresh. But when you have the attribute table open and it lets you know how many are being selected here and you're in pretty good shape to go on from there. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out. If not, take care.